Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Lawton Sugihara. I'm on the 2014 Contractors Association uh, Steering Committee, and I also work for Hawaii Gas. This afternoon, we have Mark Abrell and Jen Eckleberry, are both from HBM Building Supply, and will be doing a presentation on the ABCs of bath remodeling. After their presentation, they will be at the HBM booth inside of the hall to take any questions you may have. To show your products, to show you products that they are talking about and to visit with you about your plans. Mark and Jill will be doing this presentation again tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Okay. Mark and Jill, Jan, I'm sorry. Yeah, same Jill, it's Jan. Well, thank you everybody for coming and for allowing us to uh, kind of shed some light on the, you know, the art of remodeling via the kitchen or the bathroom. Uh, we do have a lot of material to cover, and I would ask that you know we hold uh, the questions until the end, uh, uh, and we can answer them best. Okay. Today we're going to talk about uh, you know the ABCs of remodeling a bath. You know there were times that we may be sitting on. The library and we look around and we think maybe it's time to remodel this and then we start taking stock of what it is that we want to do so where do we start well the first thing you do is plan your project okay? you clearly define what is it that you want to do in order to do a renovation you want to make sure that the whole process the experience that you're going to go through is one that uh, you know you can brag about on the end. You know I've seen projects that go really smooth and they're very very happy, but I've also seen projects where you know somewhere along the line there was some misgiving about what was said, what was promised, and you start having this, and that's where all the problems start. So we have to clearly define the project. The other thing is we have to decide how much money do we want to spend. Okay, you know whether we're going to change the fixtures, we're going to remodel the entire bathroom. How much money do we have to spend to do that? Determine a timeline. Okay, when do you want this done? And some people might say, well, whenever. Well, when, whenever is not a good answer because your whenever and his whenever might be two different. Okay, so we have to be clear about when you want it done. Determine who will be doing the work. Now, this is perfect because the speaker before us talked about hiring licensed contractors. So we have to be very, very careful about who decide we want to do the work. Okay? Do we want it done on time? Do we want it you know, done the way we want it? Do we need permits? Okay? We've got to determine that. And by all means, wait a minute, I know you guys love to do this, and I know you like to do that. Go shopping. Once you decide what it is that you want to do, go shopping. Go get ideas. Don't jump into the project. Go get a lot of ideas. Get ideas for the renovation project. You also get ideas on how much it'll cost to do the project. Okay? So there'll be no surprises. You you will get a bar, ballpark project and see what is readily readily available or what needs to be ordered. Okay, based on that you can determine, you know, your timeline. What's it going to cost? To de define the project, are we going to redesign the bathroom space? Are we going to install a new a bathtub or a shower? Are we installing new flooring? Are we going to upgrade our lighting fixtures, paint the walls? Are we going to design for accessibility? Accessibility means as we age, we got to make provisions for us to utilize that bathroom safely and efficiently, or any combination of all or all of the above. Yeah, that's what redesign is all about. Yeah. Identify what it is and be real clear about it, because the clearer you are in your mind, the clearer you will be explaining it to whomever you're going to have uh, do the job. How much money do we need to do this project? Part of it is material costs. Part of it is additional freight costs. If we're gonna hire people, how much labor is it gonna uh, cost us? Is it gonna be specially designed? Are we gonna have to pay a draftsperson or an architect to design the space that we're, we're looking at? Okay, those are all factors that you need to consider. Determine your timeline. How long will it take to complete the project? Some things to take into consideration, planning and consulting. That sometimes takes the longest. Okay. Again, we want to make sure we know exactly what we want, 
Whatever's on paper, whatever's going into place, it's gotta be the same. The lead time for custom materials, you gotta know that. You want a special shower, special valve, special this, special that, know exactly how long it's gonna take. Okay? Actual construction time, okay? work with your contractor, work with whoever you're uh, gonna have do that project, come up with a timeline for that, okay? And also inspections. Who will be doing the work? Yourself, a licensed contractor. Are we gonna need a plumber? Are we gonna need an electrician? Cabinet installers, countertop fabricator or installers, flooring installers, or painting, okay? Now one of the things that we do have at HPN is what we call the Better Builder Directory. What the Better Builder Directory does, it gives you a lead on contractors that you can select from. Now we've carefully screened a lot of the contractors. Number one, that they're licensed. Number one, that they're they're you know uh, they're, they're very reputable people. They do good work. They can be counted on. Um, and of course, you know they're they're bondable by us. Go on our website. Look at that list. They're listed by trade. They're listed also by trade area. Okay, that'll be a good start for you. Again, the speaker before us talked about hiring a licensed contractor. Okay, so some of you that were here earlier, those are very, very valid points because licensed contractors gotta have all the necessary uh, insurance to make sure that you, Mr. and Mrs. Homer, are not put at risk. Okay, you worked long and hard to own that house, to, to save enough money to renovate that bathroom, you deserve to be protected. So please, consider that seriously. Some of the bath, bath renovation ideas, okay? Um, how many of you got, you know, just show of hands, a bathtub? Just a bathtub. How many of you take a bath with it, soak in it? Okay, one hand, okay? Me, I got a bathtub, I wish I didn't. Okay, I'd like to have a shower, okay? Um, install a larger bathtub, yes, that, that you like to come home, hard day's work, fill that tub up. In a soak in it. Um, how many of you, you know, in the morning when you're getting ready, you're fighting for that laugh? Or you got kids that they're occupying the other bathroom, you got it, you're already late. By having double laughs, now you both can, you know, uh, get ready independently. Okay? Install a hand shower. I'm a real big believer in installing hand showers. Okay? Uh, in every bath, the reason for that, and the rule in my house anyway, is that whoever's the last to take a shower has to wash the tub and the tub door down and squeegee everything. Okay? <laughs> because over time, you're gonna get a buildup of soap scum or water spots and so forth. Just go to the practice, and it takes about 15 seconds to just go ahead and rinse the entire tub and door down. Does this make sense? Additional bathroom storage for beauty supplies, towels, bathroom. How many hours? I mean, we got stuff in there, right? A lot of stuff, but we just don't have enough place to put it, uh, all that stuff, okay? Those are some of the things you might think about. And of course, Jan, who is our expert <coughs> designer, I mean, she can work wonders with cabinets by developing additional storage space by being real creative with cabinets and accessories that can expand on a lot of the um, storage capacity of cabinets. Mark, can I interject on that? Sure. Um, that's another reason for that list is, um, you know, get real specific on what your needs are. So if storage is an issue for you, you know, mention that because there are other ways to get things like that done. So, go ahead, yeah, sorry. Thank you. Okay. Um, you know, installing wall cabinets or medicine cabinets or drawer organization trays. And, and later on in this presentation, we're going to show you some of those ideas, uh, you know, on slides too, for you to take with you. Pre-planning, we do pre-planning. And I know some of you have done this whether you're building a new home or uh, doing a You start with a file with photos, magazine clippings, and ideas that you like as you come across it. How many of you have cut out pictures and just kind of paste them in a book and said, okay, when I'm gonna talk to my designer, I'm gonna flip open this book, and you know what, they don't, they're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. That helps them a lot, okay? The other thing we advocate is that you make a list of the features that you like about your bathroom now, and what it is that you dislike about them. And only when you can identify those things, then you can identify what it is that you really want and what it is that you want done. 
when you go to sleep at night, keep a notebook by the side of you, right? Because I know you're going to jump up and say, you know, I, I got an idea, I'm going to do this. When you get up in the, the next morning, you say, oh, no, I, I forgot what it, what it was I was thinking about. Does that happen? Okay, so write it down. And again, go shopping. Get ideas for uh, bathtub and showers, bath faucets, cabinets, countertops, flooring, lighting, paint, and bath accessories. All those items that, um, you know, will go into renovating your bathroom. You take a look at them, okay? I hate to say it, but, you know, sometimes there's a lot of um, websites that you can browse that would also give you ideas. Okay. So now we've done all that. We've made a list, checked it twice, went shopping, we're ready to start, right? We're telling you ready, set, stop. The number one rule with renovation is you do not start the project until you've got everything on site. Now, renovation is totally different from a new house. Okay, a new house, you've got time, right? You're not living in the house. It doesn't inconvenience you, but a renovation does. Whether it's the kitchen or the bathroom, how long can you wash dishes in the toilet? How long can you wash dishes in the laundry tray? Every day goes by, you're gonna think about that timeline we talked about, okay? So make sure that everything is on site before we start, okay? Cabinets, <coughs> sorry. You know, sometimes we, 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 we do the best we can getting all the designs correct, getting the orders in, it comes on time, and sometimes the factories, you know, it's human error, and they'll leave out a piece. Uh, piece. And, uh, sorry, <laughs> you know, what bathrooms? <laughs> uh, you know, and, and, and again, that might be a critical piece of putting that bathroom together, okay, or kitchen. Uh, so make sure that we take stock of everything and make sure everything is on hand. When we go and select the tub, you, you gotta think about who will be using the tub. You know, I'm, I'm going over it real quickly. Here. What will the tub be used for? Who will, be so will you be soaking by yourself, or will it be for two? <laughs> Do you want, or are you using that bathtub just to get clean? In other words, you're using it to take a shower. Like most of us, we've got a bathtub there, and we're using it only to take a shower. It doesn't make sense. Will you be bathing the kids in it? Okay. Uh, do you, of course, after you answer, ask yourself all that question, you're going to go, do I really need a tub? Okay. To answer that question, you got to think about the future. Okay. If you really need a tub. I think some said, you know, I think you got to have one tub in the house in case you decide that you're going to sell the house. You know, that might be a deal breaker if you don't have one. So you might have to have one. Okay. Of course, we, actually this is really nice on my screen. Um, you know, whether it's a bathtub or a shower stall, uh, the best of both worlds is to have what they call a bath and shower combination, okay? That means you're gonna have a bath to take a bath in or to, to soak in, but you're gonna also have a shower uh, stall combination that you can shower in, which I think most of us do with our bathtubs anyway. If that's one of the things that you can work with. You can also take out that bathtub and just install a full shower. Okay. Usually the bathtub spaces uh, are, are large enough such that you can install just a shower. Okay. Um, and manufacturers now have come out with shower stalls with a right hand or a left hand drain so that you can retrofit that shower stall or shower pan into the existing bathtub space. So you can have a shower stall in this place without major uh, alterations. Oversized tubs. Okay. Those comes in many, many, many different sizes. They come in soaking tubs. They also come in jetted tubs. They also now come in champagne tub, which is just bubbles coming up the wrong way. Again, to your preference. Um, you know, I, I would I would also very very uh, think very carefully about installing oversized tubs. You know, my experience has been people, you know, it's a novelty, like they like having that, but within a year, realizing how much water it takes, how long you gotta wait, how fast the thing gets cold, they end up putting up 
It's a thyroid snap and stuff like that. That's the reality. More storage yes. space. So be careful of that. Too sorry. Too sorry. Okay. But again, that's you know the, the thing that you want to do. Uh, make sure that you know uh, we're going to use it. Now, I'm I'm for one that you know I always if I have to ask the question, why do you want that? It's merely to make sure that you know you're spending your your money wisely and that you're aware of a lot of the things that you know we see going on. And of course, you know, if you're looking only for the moment, you know having a nice stuff like that may make sense, but long term may not. Okay. Of course, when you select your tubs. You also have to select the valve. Okay, you're going to have either a, you know, most valves, tub and shower valves. Again, those are things that you turn on the water. And, um, it's going to be a single handle operation. It's going to be pressure balancing valves. Okay, now, and, and that's most standard with valves nowadays. Pressure balancing valve simply means that, you know, I don't know if you guys have the experience where you've taken a shower, somebody flushes the toilet, and all of a sudden you get burned because the water that water pressure changes. So you get a lot of hot water because the toilet is taking up the cold water. Okay. With the new technology nowadays, the pressure balancing valves compensate for that pressure differentials. And so what happens is the volume of water uh, gets diminished and keeps you from getting burned. Now a lot of the accidents happen not from getting burned, but more from the reaction of the change of the temperature of water that people kind of try to get out of it, they slip in the tub, hit their head, you know, do all kind of crazy stuff. But that's where a lot of the accidents happen. Okay. Uh, those valves come in chrome, satin nickel, or brushed nickel finishes. Okay. Um, again, you know, pick your decor. You know, again, when you're sitting there and deciding what it is that you wanted this finished product to look like, you may have determined, uh, you know, what all the finishes that uh, you wanted to have happen there. It could be you know, it could be just a standard chrome, it could be white, it could be, you know, brushed stainless, which is one of the craze now, or satin nickel. Um, again, it just adds a, a different flair to the bathroom. One thing I'd like to really point out, uh, and I call it rule number one, is you know when you guys are changing the valve inside the wall? You know, although we're on a budget, you know, we, we, we think about how much money that it, we want to spend, this is the one that I would highly recommend that we not skimp on. Okay, that's the stuff that's going to go inside the wall. It's going to be covered up, and it's going to be there forever and ever. If something should happen to it, and let's say you opted to go something very, very economical or cheap, um, and you know, 10 years down the road, something goes wrong with it, and you can't get parts for it, um, and I'm not going to be tell you whose valve it is, but then you're going to have a problem, yeah, especially with leaking and so forth. So whatever you saved on originally, you might end up paying for in the long run because you're going to have to take out the wall and take out that valve. So this part, very important that we not scrimp. <coughs> okay, try to get the best that you can afford. Okay, get something that that is name brand that you can recognize. That and also don't be afraid to ask what is the availability of parts. Not only today, okay, years ago. Who's the manufacturer? I can tell you that the imported parts, we don't know who the manufacturers are. And so when they ask us, you know, whose part is it, we don't know. Okay. So be careful with that, but pick the best you can on your, your in-wall stuff. Customize the shower heads. There's a ton of shower heads out there that you can pick from. Okay. The, the shower heads that normally come with the valve, sometimes they're just like, you know, simple, shower heads, and those are fine too. But you might also want to get a little bit more fancy and put in, you know, uh, different shower heads. And again, there's a ton of shower heads out there on the market that will fit any valve, because all it is is an outlet for, for water, okay? Again, I talked about handheld showers. Consider this one. Consider installing a handheld shower in the bathroom shower. Bathing children, how easy is that, right? Um, cleaning. And how many of you are caregivers? Okay. By having that hand shower, not only can you use the hand shower, but you can also mount it on the bar at a height that's lower than the normal height and have them sit on the, on the uh, you know, those chairs and they can bathe comfortably or you can take the hand shower and bathe themselves. Okay, real important. 
bathroom sink choices, again, um, when you go shopping, think about countertop uh, counter ladder. The best the ladders that mount on top of the counter. Okay. Problem is sometimes you get this lip right here. Okay. Uh, so when you get water in there, you can't get it back over. Okay. Uh, mostly gone. Of course, if you're going to do solid surface countertops with granite or quartz or marble, what have you, highly recommend that you do what you call the undermount bowls. Okay, that's the bowls that mount from underneath. You take everything, every, all the water up on top, and you just go wipe it right back into it. There's no lip, no nothing. It just goes right back in. Okay? Uh, and it looks very, very nice. Okay? More laboratory choices. I mean, one of the crazes right now is vessel laboratory. Those are those glass bowls that sit on top of the countertop. You have to make sure that if that's one of your choices, vessel labs, that you communicate that to the designer because the cabinets now have to be a little bit lower because you don't want to have a vessel lab on a regular and you're like this trying to use it, okay? <laughs> so we have to communicate. Again, making absolutely clear what it is that we want. Uh, taking the pictures, pasting it so that your designer can review it with you. And again, ultimately it's the experience you're gonna have during this whole process. The worst thing to do again is to go through this process and find out again we because we didn't communicate there was some miscommunication that now all of a sudden this lab is too high so now we got to get a different cabinet or we're going to get a different lab. mark the other thing about the vessels that i learned the hard mm -hmm. way because i've had one is that they don't have the um the bladder part so yes. they don't drain like a regular sink drains it actually takes a longer time for a vessel to to drain that was kind of a disappointment for me when I had one done. It looked great though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you try that? Again, uh, for smaller bathrooms that you don't want to put a cabinet, you just want to sink it there, you can either do what they call a wall hung lavatory or a pedestal lavatory. Again, these things don't allow you to store uh, anything underneath. Okay, you don't have storage space. That means you're going to make provisions for storage someplace else. Okay? How about doing furniture it's one of the other ideas when we say furniture we start to see uh, it's almost like a throwback they're starting to use furniture and laboratory tops in tandem to create a certain motif in the bathroom okay a certain look again it all comes from planning you, what do you see again you went to all those magazines and you see these things and you say Boop, that's what I want and that's what you're gonna get Okay, if that's the look that you like. I see that more and more uh, starting to pop up. Laboratory faucets, one handle, two handle, four inch center set, widespread, or single hole. All different choices that you can choose. Again, they all serve the same function. They all have different looks. It all depends on what it is that you want. This is purely personal, okay? Not one function is better than you. Toilets. Uh, you have your two-piece toilets, you have your round front. Again, round fronts, normally if there's a space restriction that it sticks out too far, then we might opt to go with the round front. You have the elongated two-piece toilet. Two-piece simply means you have a bowl and you have a tank. Separate pieces. Okay, that's, and again, in most homes, that's the standard. Again, when you start to get a little bit fancy, you might get uh, a one-piece toilet. Function-wise, no different. And this again is purely personal. But let me share a story about elongated toilets for you. I prefer the elongated toilets. And one of the key questions I would ask, <coughs> and ladies, you can relate to this, how many boys you got in the family? This village. Yes, is that purely correct? How many times have you gone and have to clean up after them, guys? Okay? <laughs> Elongated toilet solves that problem. Okay. It's about 25 bucks more than a round front toilet, but I tell you what, it's 25 bucks well spent, especially for you, Miss, Mrs. Homeowner, who's had to go clean up after your husband and the boys. Um, you deserve to have that. Okay. So we're looking for toilets, please um, consider it highly. Utilize cabinetry to create more space. Again, we talked about you know working within the existing space maybe from one to two vanities, okay? Or we might want to do a wall-hung vanity cabinet, okay? Where we're creating more space to store stuff. Getting, this is what I'm talking about, getting real creative 
put your cabinetry in. And Jan is really good at that. Okay, talk to it. She's gone to, after she led me to all these different ideas, that you, there's this website that you can look at and see all of these ideas that you never thought exist, but it can be done. You're only limited by your imagination. Okay? Again, if you can imagine it, do it. Again, here they're taking spaces that, again, that we thought were not usable and creating storage space for it. They're taking cabinetry and creating, getting creative with the accessories of the cabinets and making them very, very useful. Install tall cabinets uh, in the bathroom. Again, we trying to take the existing space and creating more space for storage, more space that we, we, can, we, we can use. And women, you know this, so the more cabinet space you have, the more stuff that we put in it, right? One of the nice things is, uh, you know, uh, having mirrors and medicine cabinets to complement your bathroom. Other ideas for storage solutions. I mean, these are all accessories that can be had. Um, you know, again, your your drying stuff, uh, power racks. You know, getting creative with your cabinets here. Uh, just holders. You know, a lot of placeholders for knickknacks that normally lying around on the. Uh, that at the top. We want to get all those things off. Okay. Bath accessories. These I call jewelry off the bath. Okay. All is said and done. You got the right shower. You got the right faucet. You want to make sure that <coughs> your your bath accessories complements everything that you've worked hard to put in there. Women, you know when you put on jewelry, you don't just put on any one, right? You kind of oh yeah, match my shoes or matches my purse or. Yeah, it kind of matches, so that's what we do with, with bath accessories. Okay. And they also come in the finishes that match the faucet finishes as well. Don't forget the kids. Okay. They are accessories for the kids. If you do forget, but you involve them in the planning process, trust me, they'll remind you that they're part of this family. So we also need to take them into consideration. So don't forget the kid. Flooring options. Um, you know, you are your choice. Um, you know, ceramic tiles, granite tiles, sheet vinyl, uh, stained concrete. That's really a personal preference. Again, it all depends on how much work you want to do to uh, keep it clean, how much maintenance you want to do. Thank you. Lighting upgrades, uh, you know, ceiling lights, so recess lighting, strip bathroom lights, uh, wall sconces, those are all different kind of lights that will either highlight the bathroom. Now the key with lighting is that we make sure that how we position the lights does not cast any shadows, especially when we're doing makeup in the morning. We don't want shadows on our face. Okay? We want to illuminate our faces. Painting, okay? This is purely personal, okay? Um, you know, talk to Jan, talk to the painting guys, uh, see if they can come up with um, you know, some color combination that will really accentuate and complement the stuff that you've put in. Okay, I see a lot of accent walls going in now. Yeah, just to accent all of that stuff. You know, I think, I mean, that, that was a far-fetched idea, but now it's a common place to have uh, an accent wall and a different color wall in the same bathroom. Okay. For the bathroom, you decide what type of wall finish you want, what brand of paint you will be using, the color name and number, and what is the desired finish? Whether you're gonna have eggshell, satin, semi-gloss, or gloss. I wouldn't recommend gloss in the bathroom. And for those of you who want to go out and you know really go get ideas, and if I've totally confused you today, these are some of the resources that you can go look at. Okay? There's a ton of ideas that you can read, that you can download pictures, and that you can um, you know, incorporate into your bathroom. Magnificence, and especially this house, I think Jan brought that up for me, there's a ton of pictures, you can go crazy. Okay, but by all means, download the pictures, paste them, take it to the, uh, uh, your designer and she can help you. Okay. Are we doing good. 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 Anybody have any questions at all? Well, Mark, you're good. <laughs> You go to, uh, you know, like, like for example, like the uh, 
wholesale plumbing contract policies. And ask them about, you know, or, or you take like, for example, name brands like Kohler, Delta, or American Standard. But if you start to see stuff like, you know, uh, Blue Eagle or, or you know, uh, Bad Time, I would be very, very conscious uh, or wary of those. Yeah. So the question you gotta ask is, if I opt to buy this out 10 years from now, will I be able to get the funds? Your reputable manufacturers will be around in 10 years. Yeah, the fixtures are really important, I think, to spend a little money on as well, not even just the valves. To make yeah. sure you don't buy something cheap that's going to break. And I don't want to say cheap. Problem. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, good. Well, thank you for coming by. And uh, again, we'll, later this evening, we'll do, be doing a kitchen remodel uh, segment. So, uh, if you're interested, you know, by all means. Thank you.